What's going on guys? On this fine evening, I will be uh, showing you a very interesting case that I came across. Um, to be completely transparent with you, the case is done, but I'm not sure if I documented all of the steps of the procedure. So before this goes back to its client, because uh, they wanted this uh, device back, I wanted to show you that these things sometimes do occur and sometimes uh, you have to get creative with your recovery process. And uh, when I say that, I really do mean it. So this older SSD from a MacBook, I got it hooked up to uh, PC3000 Portable Pro. By the way, I have to say, I absolutely in love with this device. Uh, it's running four cases at the same time, two NVMe devices, one uh, SATA M.2 and one USB-C SSD. All of them are getting recovered. So um, previously, if I had more than one NVMe case and a USB case, I had to choose which I'm going to work with first and then wait until that's done to move on to the other uh, two devices. Right now I can work all, all three of them and even if I had another uh, SSD that is natively NVMe, uh, I could run that as well. Uh, this is a power switch. When we hit the power switch, we see these strange lights appear, uh, but then the unit goes into PHY kind of steady, right? So if I was to enter the utility at this moment, we should be able to get a proper Apple ID. If we get a proper Apple ID, we can even dare to read a sector. And looks like we're in, looks like we we're able to read the sector. But the sector, you see, it's uh, a very long sector. It's not a standard 512, it's actually 4,000. So it's eight times longer. Now, let's go ahead and create an image task to make it interesting, to see uh, what sort of solution we may apply in this case. I'll be honest with you guys, this thing gave me a lot of pain uh, before it gave up all of the data. I go into a data extractor and I'm just going to create this uh, Samsung case just for, for you guys right now. Samsung demo. It's a virtual disk. Here we go. The um, case is open. We can uh, go to the map, we can click on different sectors, see if we can read them. Things look great. So how would we go about imaging it? Well, let's start the image process and let's just monitor what happens. So you see, it ran for a little bit and then it dropped the link. And now there is no process in here that I can set up to uh, re-establish this link. So in other words, every time this link, PHY link disappears, I have to repower this unit, wait until it gives us ready status and continue. And then we can go forward up until it drops link again. Now, how often that link will drop out? Well, let's just say it will drop out very often, guys. This thing actually has APFS on it. And with APFS, the file system is very, very, very massive. It consists of thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces that are scattered all over the place. It will probably, no, it won't need the password because it's not encrypted. Um, let's go and or map. Say, if we were to look at the map of uh, catalog tree and file system tree, we're dropping link. It got to a point where it just started to become more and more and more and more and more frequent. I uh, noticed that every time I push down on this thing, like around this area right here, it connects. So what I decided to do is add some weight to it. And to help me, <laughs> I have these things, you know what those are, for those who are in data recovery industry, 
these are platter uh, holder stands I was doing some R&D work for one of the things we were building for the lab at some point and I took two of them with me so they never made it back onto our laminar flow bench I tried different weights because you know a certain amount of pressure could have been too much not enough pressure would not be enough so I started experimenting you know with different things putting different things on it seeing if it's gonna prolong our reading or not so uh, here's what I <laughs> came up with it was literally fixed with this this drill I set it right here kind of balanced it and you can see that it's actually you know applying quite a bit of pressure to this there so this was exactly back and forth here you see I'm holding it down and it's running What happens if I let go? I let go and it instantly stops. <laughs> you know what it felt like? It felt like a game of Ford Bayard where you have to solve a puzzle or solve some sort of a riddle. Boom, and there it is. So in this position, now, when it's blinking like that, under pressure, I was able to get it imaged fully. And uh, let's have a look at the speed. It's running at uh, 80 megabytes per second. So cloning two terabytes of this device is not gonna take too long uh, with that kind of speed. And <laughs> as you can see, we are hoovering the Ryobi drill to make this happen, guys. This unit can now go back to its uh, original owner. I really wanted to make this episode to show you guys that sometimes uh, the devices will act in the strangest possible ways. And uh, there is no handbook for how to make this happen. There is no manual that you can refer to on how to fix these things. Sometimes it's just literally you have to explore. You may say, well, there's clearly a break of a joint there somewhere. Yeah, probably. You're probably right. There's probably a break of a joint. But if you know SSDs that are coming on MacBooks, you know that they're covered with this epoxy and removing that epoxy without damaging the chips and damaging the board is not a simple task. If they had only chips on the on one side technically could be ground down from the bottom side but they have chips on two sides directly right above each other so you can't really grind into them you have to heat it to remove it and it's a uh, definitely a pain in the ass process so it, uh, reflowing also can be very very problematic because you won't get flux under there and you're gonna start heating this up the solder will start peeking through uh, the epoxy. It's just uh, not gonna be a, a, a good <laughs> good turnout. So uh, yeah, I think that what was used in my case was actually uh, the best possible remedy for this device. Knowing that that pressure was needed, I needed something constant. Kind of reminded me uh, of some of the techniques I used to use back, back, back in the day. <laughs> I remember there were some flash drives uh, that would have slightly dislodged uh, controllers or the NANDs and if you put enough pressure on them that contact is remade and they can run again. So this was kind of like you know blast from the past with this SSD. I'm glad it was solved. If you guys have a similar problem if you have proper equipment to image it and monitor what it does then you can explore that option if you're in a jam where you're the owner of a ssd like this or anything else and it doesn't work uh, i'm not saying send it here i'm gonna bend the hell out of it and recover your data but i'm saying that um finding out that that's what was required sometimes what it's gonna take to recover your data and luckily this thing ended up here 
and uh, luckily all of the data was saved. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.